Thank you very much for this uh, kind introduction. I just make, have to make one correction. It's not the only Münzer from Austria. It's also Münzer from India. We are running a biodiesel plant uh, also in Navi Mumbai. So I'm representing here two worlds, European and Indian, <coughs> Asian world. And actually, we opened a branch in Bangladesh yesterday. So I think it's a good day to present on waste to energy. Next slide, please. So this is exactly where we start at the moment. This is uh, a picture of the river where every 13th people in the world is directly dependent. It's River Ganges, where studies show that there is no single bacteria in the world which you cannot find in this river. This is uh, what happens uh, after tremendous pollution. The next slide is uh, showing you what happens if you don't care what you eat. This is uh, in times of coronavirus, a picture of China where gutter oil, oil taken out from the sewage and the drainage system is resold in the food chain. It's uh, about 10% of all the edible oil consumed in the Chinese market is from this source. So please have it in mind. Next time you have Peking duck on the street food vendor, this is where it happens. And the last one showing you what happens when life becomes impossible. When there is a combination of uh, waste from chemical industry and all other surroundings happening in Bangalore where these lakes are burning because of anaerobic environment under the, uh, under the waste all over this, the, the lake. Next slide, please. So what happens actually in Europe we started under the new commission the European Green Deal to make Europe the first climate neutral continent by 2050. We hope are on the good way by doing several things, by boosting the economy, by improving people's health, and by improving the quality of life. Next slide. But this is, I think, not enough because I, I think we need a world's Green Deal not in European single um, point of view. We need to transform whatever we already started centuries and uh, back again in, uh, in Europe. Th this needs to be transformed also to other systems. Next slide. And there was one man actually, we met him <laughs> already today, who had this vision to go outside of India to find the best solutions available on the markets and to bring them to India. This happened actually in 2015. Um, it's the first tweet when the Honorable Minister and also Mr. P. Ashok, I think in these days he was uh, still the chairman of India Oil, um, went to Austria. They went actually through all Europe trying to find the best ethanol production, waste to energy, biodiesel production facilities, and luckily they came to our plant in uh, Vienna. Um, and we could show him the whole circle from waste collection, from used cooking oil collection, to the treatment of the f waste, to the production, to an energy, and to supply this to the fossil industry. And this was actually the, the first initial step for us to move, wait one second please, to move to India. Uh, and actually two days back and a year before, difficult, last year on 13th of February, we inaugurated our plant in Navi Mumbai by the Honorable Minister, um, where we had the first real whole circle facility um, where we could show from the collection system of used cooking oil from Maharashtra, Navi M and, and uh, Mumbai and Maharashtra Pune area, um, which is collected in Maharashtra, processed in Maharashtra, and also sold in Maharashtra. So the, f the f a full circle certified by a third party, 100% used cooking oil to 100% of biodiesel. Next, and wh why can I tell this to you? I'm representing, as I said, two companies. One is Münzer Bio Industries uh, from Europe. It's the uh, mother company. Actually, it's in the smallest spot you can see uh, on this map. Uh, we're from Austria, actually it's 8 million people. Um, 
This is uh, maybe a third of Mumbai, something like this. We are experts in uh, waste collection systems for the last 30 years. Uh, we are one of the biggest biodiesel production facility uh, in Europe. Uh, and we are processing 210,000 tons, actually, um, biodiesel worldwide. Uh, biodiesel, and uh, since a few years now in uh, uh, worldwide, now in India, as you can see, and in Bangladesh. What happens to the biodiesel production actually in the world? And what happened the last five years since we are already uh, on the Indian market? You can see here the world's largest uh, biodiesel producers. It's USA, 6.9 million tons uh, of biodiesel. You see Brazil, a uh, great country on biofuel contributions. Um, you can see Germany, actually it's an 80 million inhabitants country producing 3.5 million tons. You can see this, wait, go back to the, uh, you can see the, you can see Austria, 300,000 tons. As I said before, 8 million inhabitants, 300,000 tons and more than a half is out of use cooking oil. And unluckily you can see 200,000 tons production uh, in mm, 2019 in India. So what happens actually here? Last year, on 13th of February, within the inauguration of our plant, the minister uh, all also announced advanced biofuel, uh, announced used cooking oil, biodiesel as an, as an advanced biofuel for the Indian market um, to send a, sing a signal out to the business in the meantime, many things happened. Next slide, please. Many things happened, but what uh, what is the main what's the main key uh, on this topic? Oh, thanks. What's the main key on this topic? Uh, and uh, I got the question before: uh, What can we bring to the country as incentives for increasing um, the efficiency? Number one, we started with knowledge and awareness. We went to India in 2015, 16, and started to talk to FSSAI we, that we need higher hygienic uh, regulations in the kitchen, that we need a term, what is used cooking oil, what is waste, how do I have to treat with waste? I remember my first meeting with uh, the former CEO of FSSAI, uh, Mr. Agavarin said, it's nice to have you here from all the way all over from Austria, but I'm for food uh, security and you're an energy producer, so what is my link? And this is exactly what Mr. Pradhan um, realized years before, that this waste to energy is the right way for, an to for transforming the energy system. Uh, and this is where we started. After raising the awareness and raising also the political awareness uh, and and uh, also mainly in the civil society, we started our collection system. Um, we, go, we take a drum, go to the restaurant, go to each and every restaurant and hotel we find uh, and provide our service with higher hygienic uh, collection systems with better educated uh, stuff. Uh, and then we go next steps to the waste treatment because if you just have uh, your waste collected, it doesn't make any sense for you. So you need to go into waste treatment. And finally, you need to go um, into energy production. So if the Ruku Express wants, uh, wants to stop at the Münzer company, uh, we are, you're all <laughs> um, very warmly welcome. Um, but I was needed uh, before, uh, what is, what is uh, uh, I was asked before, what is needed for, for more efficiency? What is needed for ad more efficiency in advanced biofuel production is to have organized and structured and certified collection systems for the waste so that you know exactly what you're dealing with. You know exactly that whatever you process is real used cooking oil and it's not like farm sterine, it's not like pome or whatever coming again from outside India, but it's really collected waste inside the country going uh, into the plant. And this structured and organized collection system the stake, the, 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 the companies who can do it are coming from the private sector. We, ca we know what we do for centuries. Many of our competitors in India know how to collect and how to deal with waste. So the less the state impact on this system, the better is it for 
the whole supply chain because we need to have smaller supply chains from waste collection um, to the energy production to reduce costs because the more systems in between, the more sub-collectors in between, the higher the feedstock price and the higher the feedstock price, the higher the product price. I mean, this is, uh, this is for sure for everyone. Next slide, please. And what is the uh, real impact uh, of waste-based biofuels? Uh, you can see on the one side one acre of crop field. This is actually of based on rapeseed, but it's, uh, um, it's, it's countable. Uh, makes three tons of seed is one ton of, ton of vegetable oil. If you go on crop-based, this is one ton of biodiesel. But if you remove or re uh, if you replace um, crop-based feedstock with waste-based feedstock, like use cooking oil, you can save, and this is most necessary in India, as, uh, uh, even more than in Europe, you reduce the acres you use for, for, for crop-based feedstock, and you have a CO2 reduction of three tons each ton of used cooking oil in the process. So whenever, I mean, there's like, like uh, fast food chains have mainly a ton of uh, used cooking oil a month. This is uh, approximately uh, the amount. So every ton of every fast food chain in a month reduces three tons CO2 emission on the street. And Mr. Ray, if you said that before, what is it, uh, five tons? Um, this is 15 tons reduction. Uh, in terms of CO2, if it's correctly converted into biofuel uh, and going on the street market. Um, my last slide, please, and then I hope uh, to be finished. I just want to show you a quick overview of what this, uh, this collection system is about. We need it, as, we, as said before, we need a structured system. We need collection intervals for each and every restaurant so that he, everyone knows um, to change also their behaviors in the kitchen. We need to replace the bins, weight them, charge them, um, so that we need exactly in our plant how much is collected, and then we can prove how much is the output, so there can nothing happen in between. And we can assure that this oil is not going back into the food chain, which happens every day, and which lots of studies, lots of Indian studies have shown in the past. And exactly in this point, we need to jump in. And then we go to the UCO treatment and then to the biodiesel production. Um, to give the last answer on the question how to increase efficiency, please don't start to reinvent the wheel. The wheels are invented, H is back. These wheels are running and these biodiesel plants are working all over the world. We don't need to reinvent all this, um, uh, 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 this biodiesel production facilities in terms of used cooking oil to biodiesel because they are running, they are working, and many companies from Europe, from Asia, from India, knows how to run them and how to process high quality biodiesel with high quality byproducts. This increases the efficiency to move forward with available technologies, because, and this is uh, what we saw in the European development for the last five, six years when we had a change in the European policies if you want to have new invention, if you want to have new technologies on the market, and if you want to move forward into more efficiency, you have to rely on those companies who already earn their money on a proper market. Because all the other systems, and thanks uh, to the lady just before, um, going directly on the point of what's the cost. This is exactly the point. I heard in the morning that we had uh, coal to fuel in Second World War. For sure, because money was no argumentation. If you need your tank and your planes running, you don't care about the cost. But luckily, we care about the costs, and luckily we know that there is a several price to be, uh, to be met. And as long as we are relying on, on uh, technologies too far in the future, we will not move the way till we reach this technology. And maybe there is a zero price ethanol technology in future. This would be great, but let us not um, uh, leave the time till we get to this point. And on this way, we are also here to 
take Indian, our Indian colleagues and also uh, from other countries, take them under, uh, under our services and try to walk all this way till the zero emission um, future, to walk this way together. Um, because if we want to have 5% blend in 2030, if we want to be carbon neutral in 2050, we cannot wait till 2049 and hope that the technology will be invented this day. We need to start walking today. We need to start walk together. And this is my last um, sentence on efficiency. Let us join hands on this way. Let us rely on each and every available technology and let us not replace technologies, but let us join hands all the technologies on this way to a carbon-free future. Thank you.